Good morning. Welcome to our Saturday morning devotion. Glad that you are here with us. And uh, it's looking to be a beautiful day, so uh, I hope that you take some time out today to enjoy that this weather. I know we've had some uh, not so nice weather the last couple of days, but glad to see the sun out and uh, hopefully you're looking forward to having a great day. And uh, this morning uh, I'm going to be reading from Psalm 34, so I hope that will be uh, this challenge will be a blessing to you. And um, Psalm 34, I'm going to be reading the first uh, eight verses as I bring this challenge this morning from the Psalm of David. Um, I actually uh, posted a verse on this on Thursday, um, or uh, yesterday actually, I posted the verse uh, from verse num- Psalm 34, verse 1, and then I shared this as well with our uh, teens last night in one of our Zoom meetings. And by the way, if you are a teenager and you haven't been part of a lot of our uh, Zoom meetings or you did, didn't know that we've been doing them, every Friday night we've been having a Zoom uh, meeting with all the teens and just uh, having a time of devotion and uh, playing some games, just chatting, things like that. Um, so if you'd like to be a part of that, just let me know and uh, we can get you set up with that. But we always look forward to those uh, times that we get to spend together as teens still. Uh, but this morning I want to... Uh, jump into this passage once again and just kind of uh, expand on a few of these verses and see how it can be a help to us during these days. So if you have your Bible, Psalm 34, verses 1 to 8. The Bible says, I will bless the Lord at all times. His praise shall continually be in my mouth. My soul shall make her boast in the Lord. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. O magnify the Lord with me, and let us exalt his name together. I sought the Lord, and he heard me, and delivered me from all my fears. They looked unto him, and were lightened, and their faces were not ashamed. This poor man cried, and the Lord heard him, and saved him out of all his troubles. The angel of the Lord encampeth round about them that fear him, and delivereth them. O taste, and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth. In him. So this morning, as we look at this Psalm of David, I want to take time to uh, read, uh, look at some of these verses. So David is writing this Psalm during a difficult time in his uh, life. If you meet, read the description at the top of the Psalm in your Bible, it says, A Psalm of David, when he changed his behavior before Abimelech, who drove him away and he departed. So this is during a time in his life where he has. Um, fled um, from Saul and he's before uh, the king of Gath and he is uh, fearful of his life and he's just constantly on the run and he writes this psalm during this time as he focuses on how the Lord had delivered him. So if you notice in verse number one it says I will bless the Lord at all times his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So this idea of bless the Lord that's the same idea as um, praising him or you know, I'm going to be thankful for his mercies. Um, I'm going to express my uh, sense of his goodness. So that's the idea of if you ask someone to uh, bless the food, you're giving thanksgiving, you're being thankful uh, for the provision from the Lord. And we see that he uses the word, I will. I will bless the Lord at all times. So this is the idea that he is resolved. You know, I'm going to do this. This is my decision that I'm going to bless the Lord, be grateful at all times, Um, full of praise. Not that I have to, not that no one's telling, not that anyone's telling me to, but I will. I choose to at all times. And that's a great challenge to us that we can see that we can make the choice that at all times we can choose to praise the Lord. So at all, all times. So as I mentioned, David's at this difficult time in his life and we see that he says at all times he will bless the Lord in every situation of his life he's going to choose that Um, so it didn't matter what point of his life he says at all times it could have been uh, in the private moments of his life it could have been in a public moment in his life it could have been through hard times it could have been good through good times Um, it could have been when he was in danger as in this moment, or he could have been in the safety of his own home. It could have been in uh, his happiness, or it could have been in sorrow. Um, This was true praise. 
you know, it wasn't going to be this determined by circumstances or trials in life. It was true praise that he was going to do it at all times. You know, he was going to see the goodness of God in his life, and he was going to see the goodness of God in um, God himself. And he chose to bless the Lord at all times. And then if you notice that he goes on to say in this verse, his praise shall continually be in my mouth. So this wasn't just um, in his heart, but this was going to be an outward expression of his praise towards the Lord as well. Um, he's going to be always uttering the praise of God or his thanks towards God is going to be unceasing. It's going to be all the time. You know, the, I like the phrase that he uses, shall continually be in my mouth. So um, during these days, we could be full of complaints. But in reality, if you look at the world, um, that's a trait of unbelief, a trait of um, worldliness. That's a trait of uh, false philosophy. That's a, that's a trait that um, the society has to complain to murmur under trials, under bad circumstances. But as a believer, as we see David here, someone who's trusting in the Lord, a trait of a believer, of someone who's um, filled with the Spirit, someone who's uh, seeking the Lord, is that their mouth is going to be filled with praise towards Him. And that's because our focus is going to be uh, on the Lord and not on the, wor on the world. When we get our focus off the Lord, that's when our mouth is going to be filled with complaints and murmurings. But we can always praise God, and God is always worthy of our praise. Um, we know that he never changes. We know that his mercies are new to us every morning, and our mouths can always be filled with praise towards him. If we allow it, um, if we focus on him, we can praise him at all times. And then as we skip down uh, to verse number four, I want to uh, look at verse number four. And it says, I sought the Lord, and he heard me and delivered me from all my fears. So this idea of see, uh, I sought the Lord, that word sought, that means to seek with care. He sought out the Lord. He was searching for him. He was calling upon him. And the, the great thing is we see that he heard him. And the Lord hears us today. When we call on the Lord, when we seek him out, when we're searching for God, he hears us. And he goes on to say, and delivers me from all my fears. So he had fear all around. Um, fear from Saul. Fear from Akesh, the king of Gath, as he as we before him, as he fled. And um, this psalm was written during a time that you could read in 1 Samuel 21. And uh, or 1 Samuel 20 and 21, it gives you an idea of the situation that was going on in the life of David. Um, Saul was seeking to take David's life from him, and David was fearful for him. And uh, Jonathan, Saul's son, was helping him out. He, he didn't have any idea that uh, his father was seeking to kill David. And um, Jonathan and David were speaking and uh, Jonathan was going to feel out the situation and let David know if it was safe to return or not, if he needed to, to go. And we see that David, uh, by the message that um, Jonathan had sent out by way of arrows, was telling David, you need to flee, you need to go. My father, um, he was angry enough that he threw a javelin at his own son. Um, even more so, he was angry at David. So David was fearful of his life. So during this time, Saul's fearful in his own country, but then on the other hand, he, he flees into enemy territory. He's before the king of Gath. He's, he literally killed their hero. Um, he had slain Philistines, and here he is in their territory. And David is fearful all around. Uh, 1 Samuel 21 verses 10 to 12 gives us an idea here. It says, and David arose and fled that day for fear of Saul. So he fled for fear of Saul and went to Achish, the king of Gath. And the servants of Achish said unto him, Is not this David the king of the land? Did they not sing one to another of him in dances, saying, Saul hath slain his thousands and David his ten thousands? 
And David laid up these words in his heart and was sore afraid of Achish, the king of Gath. So David, he's fearful all around. Can you imagine leaving your own country where you should feel safe? Well, he didn't even feel safe there, and he flees into enemy territory, and now he's fearful there as well. It says in that, that last verse I read, it says, and David laid up these words in his heart. He, you know, he was, he pondered on these things in his heart. He was afraid. And I think we do that a lot of times. We, we lay things up in our heart. We think about them. We dwell upon them. We get our focus off of the Lord and we become fearful. But we see here that the Lord was able to bring peace to David in the midst of these fears as we get back to Psalm 34. You know, there's nowhere safe for David to turn. But yet still we see God delivered him from his fears. So at this time in David's life, you, you think, you know, how can, how can you find peace at this time? But it was through the Lord. And we can find that same peace when we're fearful. As we lay things up in our heart, we think about things, we get our focus off the Lord, and we become fearful. We see in this uh, verse here, verse number four, like David said, if we seek the Lord, if we're calling upon him, he hears us and he can deliver us from all of our fears no matter the circumstances and then lastly this morning i want to look at verse number eight and that verse says oh taste and see that the lord is good blessed is the man that trusteth in him you know so much in this life that we enjoy is uh through taste and sight you know, it's something real. It's something tangible. We see things and we enjoy them. We go sightseeing. We go uh, on vacations because we like how things look. We go on road trips. Um, we we watch entertaining things because we enjoy what we're seeing. Um, we uh, taste things. We enjoy that. There's pleasure in eating. There's pleasure in the fellowship that comes with it. But it's something that's real. It's something that is physical and tangible that we can um, enjoy. We seek those things in our life. We That's what we, we find pleasure in, so we seek those things. But David here, he says, you know, have a taste and see it, that the Lord is good. Basically, he's saying, try and experience God's goodness. Try it out. You know, you can't see or taste unless you try it for yourself. You know, if I'm if I'm making something, I'm trying to test something out in the kitchen, I'll call Amanda over and I'll say, taste this. You know, I want you to consider what I'm giving you. Try it out. Let me know. Or it may be we're uh, feeding something to Simon and he's never tried it before, a vegetable he's never tried. And he'll say, you know, I don't like that. Well, <laughs> taste it first. See for yourself. You You can't make that decision unless you taste it and see for yourself. You have to try it out. So David here, he's saying, I know the goodness of God. I've experienced to myself, and I give God all the praise. I can fill my mouth continually with praise. And now he's saying here, taste and see it for yourself that the Lord is good. Trust in him. You know, during these difficult times, the Lord, he's still worthy of our praise. And rather than complaints, uh, being filled in our mouths our mouths should be filled with his praise but we need to focus on him and if we determine like david did in this psalm he says i will bless the lord at all times no matter the circumstances we can choose to do that we can also seek him out like david did i sought the lord and he heard me call upon him he hears us and he delivers us from our fears even those things that we ponder in our heart the lord knows and he can deliver us from those fears if we focus on him. And then finally, taste and see that the Lord is good. You know, the Lord is good at all times. Even during this time that we are at home, we're on lockdown, uh, it's starting to get lonely, it's starting to get drawn out, we're starting to um, feel hopeless in certain si uh, situations, our emotions are getting the best of us. The Lord is good. And maybe you've never experienced the goodness of God. So let me encourage you like David did. Oh, taste and see. Try it out. Experience it. The goodness of God. If we seek him, seek him out, call upon him and focus upon him. So I hope that is a challenge to you. I hope uh, you take the time to read Psalm 34 again. Dwell upon it. Uh, this challenge from David. 
and what, as you read it, consider the situation that he went through as he penned these words. And he was in a difficult time, and I believe we're in a difficult time, maybe not to a certain extent that he was, but nonetheless, we can still take these truths, these principles, and apply them to our lives because the Lord is good at all times and he is always worthy of our praise. So uh, let me encourage you, uh, church family, um, just to continue to seek the Lord, continue to encourage other people in the church, those that are in need, those that are, you know, I think I say those that are in need, but I believe during this time, we're all in need. We're all in need of, uh, we're missing that fellowship. We're missing that um, time we have together as a church family. But as we've mentioned before, our fellowship is through the Lord. So let us focus on that. Let's encourage one another in the Lord, point each other to Christ. Let's get our focus on him and let's experience the goodness of God together. Uh, tomorrow morning at 10 o'clock is our morning service, and Pastor will be bringing uh, that service uh, via Facebook Live, so be sure to be here. You know, invite someone out. It's a great opportunity to invite someone to join our services. And then tomorrow evening at 5 p.m., we'll be having an evening service as well. We're looking forward to that. And uh, as we mentioned, we're putting together a video, just a few uh, people who have sent in videos. We're very grateful for all of those that have sent in videos. I understand some of you aren't able to send those in or... Uh, you don't want to send those videos in. That's totally fine as well. But we will uh, be showing that video Sunday night, and we're looking forward to that, and we believe it will be a great encouragement to us as a church uh, family. So uh, take care, enjoy the rest of the day, and keep your focus on the Lord. God bless.